Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of the Do You Call Me Here Often podcast, read by me. New episodes are released every Tuesday. Bonus episodes are released at random. Available on all the usual podcast providers, probably. Please enjoy and feel free to share with anyone you like or anyone you dislike. Thank you. Today we have a collection of 62 plus waiting jokes from the website upjoke.com Please enjoy. A duck was waiting to cross the road when a chicken came running up. Whatever you do, don't do it, shouted the chicken. You'll never hear the end of it. A gynaecologist waits on his last patient who does not arrive. After an hour, he makes a gin and tonic to relax. After he settles into an armchair to read the newspaper, he hears the doorbell ring. It's the patient who arrives all embarrassed and apologises for the delay. It doesn't matter, answers the doctor. Look, I was having a gin and tonic while waiting. Do you want one to help you relax? I accept, thanks, she she answers. He gives her a drink, sits down in front of her and they start talking. Suddenly someone is heard opening the entrance office door. The doctor looks worried, gets up and says, My wife, quick, take off your clothes and spread your legs, otherwise she might think there is some nonsense going on. A man sits in his doctor's office waiting for some test results. The doctor enters. So doc, what's the prognosis? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to stop masturbating. Oh no, why? Because I'm trying to speak to you about your results. A husband and wife are waiting at the bus stop for their nine children. A blind man joins them after a few minutes. When the bus arrives, they find it overloaded and only the wife and the nine kids are able to fit onto the bus. So the husband and the blind man decide to walk. After a while, the husband gets irritated by the ticking of the stick of the blind man as he taps it on the sidewalk and says to him, Why don't you put a piece of rubber at the end of your stick? That ticking sound is driving me crazy. The man replies, if you had put a rubber at the end of your stick, we'd be riding the bus. So shut the hell up. A man is waiting for his son to be born. The doctor tells him that he has been born. The man is all excited when the doctor suddenly tells him he was born with no arms. The man is sad but says he's still my boy. Then the doctor tells the man he was born with no legs. The man is sad, but still says, he's still my boy. Then the doctor tells the man that he was born with no head or torso either. The man is greatly affected by this, but still wants to see his son. The doctor then hands him a giant ear. The man is crying and says, my boy, my boy. And the doctor then tells him, sir, there's no point in shouting. He's deaf. A cannibal was in the examination room waiting for the results of his x-ray. When the images were ready, a doctor entered the room and flipped the switch on the light box. He took one look and said, I think you swallowed a foreign object. The cannibal did the cannibal did not like the sounds of that. In fact, he was insulted. He stood up and started walking towards the door. When he got there, he turned and faced the doctor. Subject, he replied. Her name was Ming. Well, just to interject, that uh, joke was badly written because I think you swallowed a foreign object. And then he said, subject, he replied. Her name was Ming. So... Congratulations on that one, 62 plus 
jokes from popjokes.com I am a physicist. It's 3 a.m. A woman paces angrily in her house waiting for her physicist husband to come home. Finally, he does. As he walks through the door, she glares and demands, where have you been? Sheepishly, sheepishly, the physicist husband tries to explain himself. He says, well, my colleagues and I went out just for a friendly drink. A group of women invited us to join them, so we did. We drank and had fun talking and it got a little flirty. I got swept up in the moment and one thing led to another. I ended up making out with one of the women we met. His wife listens impatiently, arms crossed, furiously tapping her foot the whole time. When he finishes, she blurts out, Liar! Liar! You were in the lab again, weren't you? My wife and I had sex for three straight hours last night. We did some role playing. I played the doctor, she played the patient, who was in the waiting room for two hours and 58 minutes. A man answers his door and finds a piano tuner waiting on the step. Can I help? says the man. I haven't, or I haven't ordered a piano tuner. I know you haven't, replies the piano tuner. Your neighbours did for you. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson and Floyd Mayweather are waiting patiently for a glass of sangria. If that's not a good punchline, I don't know what is. Good God. A Buddhist monk walks up to a hot dog vendor and says, Make me one with everything. After a brief chuckle, the vendor makes the hot dog and gives it to the monk saying, That will be four dollars, please. After the monk hands over ten dollar over a ten dollar bill, he finds himself waiting uncomfortably, uncomfortably, while the vendor does nothing except stare back at him. Awkwardly, the monk uh, the monk asks, "What about my change?" Ah, replies the hot dog vendor, "Change must come from within." A man sits in the hospital waiting room day and night praying for his wife to recover. One day, while giving the wife a sponge bath, the nursing staff notices when they wash her, when they wash her private area, a slight amount of brain activity on the monitor. The senior nurse goes out to talk to the husband. Mr. Smith, we have an unorthodox request for you. My staff has noticed that your wife seems to respond to sexual stimulation we may have found a path to lead her out of the coma. We will leave the room and you can perform oral sex on your wife. The stimulation just may be enough to wake her up for good. The staff leaves the room and the husband enters. The staff sits outside listening to her EKG. Beep, 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 as she flatlines. The staff leaves the room and the husband enters. Oh, sorry. The staff comes running into the room to revive the wife. They shout to the husband, what's happened? The man turns around and zips up his fly. I don't know. She just, just started choking. I hate waiting in line so much. When I say the alphabet, I stop immediately at P. That's how much I hate cues. A couple was going to get married, but unfortunately they had a car crash and died. Before the gates of St. Peter, they stood thinking maybe they could get married in heaven. So they asked St. Peter, and Peter says, Well, it's quite rare, but let me see what I can do. So St. Peter goes into heaven. <laughs> Full stop. So St. Peter goes into heaven. As the couple sits for a couple of months waiting for an answer, they begin doubting whether they should, considering the eternal aspects. <laughs> Goodness me. As the couple sits for a couple of months waiting for an answer, they begin doubting whether they should, considering the eternal aspects. 
another month goes by and finally St. Peter emerges from heaven, very bedraggled and says, yes, you can get married. The couple says, but what if it doesn't work? Can we get a divorce? St. Peter, red in the face and totally annoyed, slams his clipboard down and says, geez. The couple are shocked and scared. They say, what's wrong? St. Peter says, listen, it took me three, fa three months to find a priest up here. Do you have any idea how long it will take me to find a lawyer? That one was actually not bad. It was just spoiled by punctuation and it all merging into one massive big sentence on screen, making it difficult to read. Four nuns are waiting in line for confession. The first nun is called upon and says, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I saw a man's penis. The priest says, For penance, you will need to rinse your eyes with holy water, then recite five Hail Marys and one Our Father. The second nun is called upon and says, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I touched a man's penis. To which the priest replied, For penance, you will need to wash your hands with holy water, then recite ten Hail Marys and five Our Fathers. Before the priest could call in the third nun, the fourth cuts in line and bursts into the confessional booth. The priest says, What's the commotion? You need to wait your turn. The nun then replies, My apology, Father, but I heard the penances you gave to the first two sisters and want to drink the holy water before she sits her nasty ass in it. The wedding party is standing at the altar waiting for bride and groom. Oh, this one has a um, not safe for work warning. The groom arrives and is adjusting his belt while smiling hugely. Groomsman asks him what he's smiling about. Groom replies, I just got the, ma the most amazing head job from a beautiful woman and will be waking up to that every day for the rest of my life. Bride arrives fixing her lipstick and smiling hugely. Maid of Honor asks, why are you so happy? Bride replies, I just gave the last bloody head job I'll ever have to give. Head job? <laughs> Hitler dies and goes to the gates of hell. St. Peter is waiting for him, staring at him, judging him. Hitler breaks the silence and asks, where am I? A bit frustrated, St. Peter responds, hell, Hitler. Confused, Hitler asks him again, yeah, yeah, heil Hitler, but where am I? Uh, not bad, but St. Peter at the gates of hell. Does he do that as well? I thought he was just up in heaven, that geezer. Maybe he does both places at once so hope he's getting paid well a man goes to the bar alone after a few too many drinks he proceeds to vomit down the front of his shirt oh man my wife bought me this shirt she's gonna kill me he drunkenly bursts out blurts out relax says the bartender put a ten dollar bill in your shirt pocket when you get home tell your wife you were walking into the bathroom when you bumped into another drunk who puked on you, then tell her he felt so bad about it he put ten dollars in your pocket to pay for the cleaning. Problem solved. The man arrives home to find his wife waiting for him in the living room. You son of a bitch! I should have known you'd get drunk and ruin such a nice shirt I spent good money on for you. Trying to keep his balance, the man slurs, Sweetheart, it's okay. I bumped into a guy coming out of the bathroom and he he puked on it. He then proceeds to pull the bill from his pocket and continues. He felt so bad about it he gave me this $10 bill to pay for the cleaning. Puzzled, the wife says, but honey, that's $20. After a brief pause, the man says, oh yeah, he's shit in my pants too. The Leprechaun and the Golfer 
This was a long one. A golfer playing in Ireland hooked his drive into the woods. Looking for his ball, he found a little leprechaun flat on his back, a big bump on his head, and the golfer's ball beside him. Horrified, the golfer got his water bottle from the cart and poured it over the little guy, reviving him. Ah, what happened? <laughs> the leprechaun asked. I'm afraid I hit you with my golf ball, the golfer said. Oh, I see. Well, you got me fair and square. You get three wishes, so what do you want? Thank God you're all right, the golfer answers in relief. I don't want anything. I'm just glad you're okay and I apologise. And the golfer walks off. What a nice guy, the leprechaun says to himself. I have to do something for him. I'll give him three things I would want. A great golf game, all the money he ever needs, and a fantastic sex life. A year goes by and the golfer is back. On the same goal, on the same hole, he again hits a bad drive into the woods and the leprechaun is there waiting for him. I thought you gave him a great golf game and he's still hitting bad drives. Anyway, twas me that made you hit the ball here. Oh, should have been patient. It was me that made you hit the ball here, the little guy says. I just want to ask you, how's your golf game? My game is fantastic, the golfer answers. I'm an internationally famous golfer now, he adds. By the way, it's good to see you're all right. Oh, I'm fine now, thank you. I did that for your golf game, you know. And tell me, how's your money situation? Why, it's just wonderful. The golfer says cheerfully. When I need cash, I just reach in my pocket and pull out hundred dollar bills. I don't even know where they I didn't even know they were there. I did that for you also. And tell me, how's your sex life? The golfer blushes, turns his head away in embarrassment, and says shyly, It's okay. Come on, come on now, urged the leprechaun. I'm wanting to know if I did a good job. How many times a week? Blushing even more, the golfer looks around and whispers, once, sometimes twice a week. What? Responds the leprechaun in shock. That's all? Only once or twice a week? Well, says the golfer, I figure that's not bad for a Catholic priest in a small parish. <sighs> Apologies for my impatience during that one. Two guys are waiting in front of the delivery room. The younger guy asks to the, the younger guy asks to the old man, Was that your daughter they took in? No, she is my wife. Aren't you too old to uh, I'm gonna start this one again, sorry. Two guys are waiting in front of the delivery room. The younger guy asks to the old man, was that your daughter they took in? No, she's my wife. Aren't you too old to be a father? Old man gets angry and yells, so what? Look, my grandfather used to love hunting. Every weekend he would take his gun and go hunt some animal. But after getting old, he started to suffer from dementia. One of those days he wanted to go hunting. No matter what we said, we couldn't change his mind. But before going hunting, he picked up his cane instead of rifle. In the forest, when he saw a deer, he aimed his cane to the deer and we heard a loud gunshot. The deer was dead. How is that possible? Someone else must have shot the deer. Sir, that's exactly what I'm saying to you. Ugh, <sighs> no. Four men are in the hospital waiting room, waiting for their babies. The nurse walks in and tells the first man, Congratulations, you're having twins. The man responds, That's a crazy coincidence. I work for the Minnesota twins. The nurse tells the second man, Congratulations, you're having triplets. The man responds, That's a crazy coincidence. I work for the 3M company. The nurse tells the third man, Congratulations, you're having quadruplets. The third man responds, 
That's a crazy coincidence. I work at the Four Seasons. The fourth man is screaming and banging his head on the wall. The nurse asks him, what's wrong? He responds, I screwed up. I work at Seven Up. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Two women, Jane and Emma, are in the afterlife waiting for judgement. Emma turns to Jane and says, I'm just curious, but how did you die? Jane replies with, I burnt to death. Emma shocked responds with, that sounds horrible, what was it like? Jane answers with, It first felt really hot and painful, but then I felt nothing. How did you die? Emma replies, Well, I believe my husband was cheating on me. I decided to leave work early one day to make sure he was loyal. I found him on the phone with his mother. I thought he was hiding something from me. So I ran to the bedroom and found nothing. Then I sprinted to the kitchen and didn't find anything. I then jolted outside to the backyard and just found that he hadn't cleaned the pool. I was so tired from running that I fell over into the pool and drowned. Jane retorts. Well, if you checked the oven, neither of us would be here right now. Ah, uh, that took me a while. What, what, wait a minute. Who put the oven on? I don't know who put the oven on because if the wife died, surely Jane would just get out the oven. I don't know. God. Right, just two more. Four nuns have just died. They are waiting to talk to St. Peter outside the gates of heaven. So Peter's back in heaven now. St. Peter. Sisters, confess your sins and you may enter paradise. None won. St. Peter, forgive me. In my life, I once gazed lustfully at a man's penis. St. Pete. Sister, rinse your eyes with holy water and you may enter the kingdom of heaven. None too. Um, I'm going to stop because this is just the same joke as before. It ends, uh, do you mind if I gargle that water before you sit in it? So we already know that one. A priest, a doctor and an engineer were waiting one morning for a particularly slow group of golfers. The engineer fumed. What's with those guys? We've been waiting for 15 minutes. The doctor chimed in. I don't think I've ever seen such inept golf, the priest said. Here comes the green keeper. We'll have a word with him. He said, Hello, George. What's wrong with that group ahead of us? They're rather slow, aren't they? The green keeper replied, Oh, yes, that's a group of blind firemen. They lost their sight saving our clubhouse from a fire last year, so we always let them play for free any time. The group fell silent for a moment. The priest said, That's so sad. I'll say a special prayer for them tonight. The doctor said, Good idea. I'll contact my <laughs> ophthalmologist colleague and see if there's anything she can do for them. The engineer said, Why can't they play at night? An animal rescuer, homeless shelter director, volunteer pa paediatrician and ice cream machine repairman are waiting at the pearly gates. Jesus, that's a hell of a setup. that. The animal rescuer meets St. Peter, who reviews her resume of thousands of animals she saved. Shaking his head, he announces, denied. Next is the homeless shelter director. St. Peter looks over his resume nods slightly but still announces denied the volunteer paediatrician getting nervous decides to let the ice cream machine repairman go next 
St. Peter glances at his resume and without hesitation, granted, and the man walks through. Now very confused, the paediatrician says, how is it that a woman who dedicates her life to saving defenseless animals and a man who has helped the lives of tens of thousands of people are both denied entry into heaven, but a regular old ice cream machine repair man gets in? Simple, explains St. Peter. We have a McDonald's. We got through maybe 30, half of the page of 62 jokes about waiting. I'm not sure how many were actually about waiting, just a fair few of them contained some people who were waiting as part of the setup. Anyway, they were from upjoke.com. Thank you for listening. All jokes were read by me. We'll be back. We'll be back. There's only me. Do You Call Me Here often is read, produced, and everything. The only thing I don't do is write the material. It's all courtesy of the internet. Join me again next Tuesday, where I'll be reading something else from the internet. Please remember, share this podcast with anyone you like or anyone you dislike. Thanks. Bye.